Okay, uh, I'm John Burt, um, and I've been dissuaded to uh, from starting this particular conversation with a uh, reference to uh, Mr. Peabody and his Wayback Machine. Uh, and because we also now have the uh, promise of cake after this, it'll be um, try to make it as short as possible. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> after the war, um, German Field Marshal Kesselring made the comment that one of the strategic errors in World War II was the Italians and possibly the Axis failure to take the island of Malta. Uh, during the war. And <clears throat> so that's what we're going to take a look at today. Um, <clears throat> basically, I'll tell you what we're going to talk about because Mrs. Snuckatello's third grade class showed me that's how you, you start a conversation. Take a look at the strategic situation and then take a look at the three different types of plans that they had. The most detailed plan was Kesselring's plan in 1942. And I call it Kesselring's plan because he was pushing it, but there's a caveat on that uh, that we'll get into when we get into the start of it. So basically here's the strategic situation. Um, and again, you know, we talk, you're revisiting the, uh, the Mediterranean from Mark's point of view. British wanted to go east to west. They wanted to keep Malta su um, supplied. They wanted to keep Alexandria supplied. And more importantly, they wanted to be able to go through the Mediterranean to get to the Far East. The Italians, wanting to rebuild the Roman Empire, want to go north and south. And right in the middle, this little guy right there, is the island of Malta. 95 square miles of very poor soil. Good part, it had absolutely superb deep water harbors. The bad part, it can't feed itself at all. 80% um, uh, during, you know, in 19, lead up to World War II, 80% of its food came from Italy. Now, Malta is, is literally a thousand miles from Alexandria, it's a thousand miles from Gibraltar, and it's 60 miles from Sicily. It became Britain's basically in 1800 but has been the pawn of Mediterranean powers basically from the time of the Phoenicians. Everybody wanted to hold on to it. When the British took it in 1800, they had seven, literally seven countries that were fighting for possession of this particular island because of its strategic location. Admiral Nelson said it the best. He considers it basically the key to, uh, to India and he hoped they never gave it up. And until it became independent, they didn't. Anyway, in night, as most of you know, the Italians jumped into the war in June. They jumped into it fairly impulsively. Uh, they decided when war started in, in September 39, they weren't ready for it. They had been talking with the Germans about the war coming up. But all those conversations had said the war was going to start 42, 43. They, when it started in 39, they simply weren't ready. In June, it became very apparent that the uh, Germans were just about ready to take over France. And at that point, everybody assumed that if France fell, Britain would, would sue for peace. It was going to be a nice short war. Mussolini didn't want to be left out, so he declared war. <clears throat> At the time, they had a plan to take Malta. That was one of their keys, but they weren't ready for it. The plan they had basically was to put troops here on those shores. Another group of here would come over after all of the defenders moved forward. And maybe a little bit over here, they didn't land some light armor. Problem they had with this one, basically, it required a lot of landing boats. They didn't have them. They were gonna have to collect over a hundred of them from the Adriatic Sea. They didn't have time to do it, basically, because there was about a five day period between the time when Mussolini said, I think we're gonna go into this and the time that they actually did. 
another aspect that they took a look at is they were afraid of the armor that the British had on the island. The armor was actually Wren carriers. These are little light, light universal carriers. They're not really tanks. They're not really armor, but they are armored. And it turned out in some tests later that they're actually a little bit more invulnerable to machine gun fire than the, the Italian L3 series tankettes. So this is something they were actually concerned about. And then finally, they didn't go into it because it was expected to be a short war. Uh, it was gonna all be over in a couple months. They were gonna collect things like the Mona Lisa, um, the French fleet was supposed to, uh, that's what Mussolini was hoping for. And basically they decided that Malta was of secondary importance, no big deal. You know, once once Britain took out of the armor, that was going to be no big deal. And they figured that their air fort, air force, which was only 60 miles away in, in Sicily, would be able to sterilize, his words, the, uh, the island and keep it from causing any real problems. At the time, the Maltese defenses were extremely poor. The reason they were poor is that the British, up to lead up in the war, were hoping that it, Italy would stay neutral. And they didn't want to evoke any problems by, by putting more uh, defenses on the island. So they kept it very, very almost defenseless at that point. They only had five British battalions. They had no little, you know, there were no combat experienced troops on the island. And they were wedded to defending the entire coastline. It's basically, they were penny packed all the way around that island. They had four aircraft, period. And actually, the reason they had the four aircraft is because Cunningham gave them to them because they didn't have any aircraft at the beginning of the war. And actually, the Admiralty sent him a, a sharply, wrote it, sharply written note you know, complaining about the fact that he had just given, you know, aircraft to the island, the island for defense. But that's where Faith, Hope, and Charity came in. They really didn't do a whole heck of a lot against the uh, Regia Aeronautica, but then again, the Regia Aeronautica really didn't do a whole heck of a lot against the island. And then finally, if they actually had invaded almost all of the, we go back to here, all of these landing spikes were on the other side of what was called the Victoria Line. The Victoria Line was an 18, 1800s set of fortifications. Basically, everything below here was where most of Malta's population and all of the important aspects of the island were, were found. This whole thing right here, right up on the fault line along the island, basically was set up so that if the bad guys would actually show up, they would have to go across that line in order to get to the most important parts of the island. That particular line, even in uh, 1940, would have been a major problem for light troops, which is literally all it, Italy had at that particular time. So basically, they would have had to overcome the Victoria lines. However, because of the penny packed area that they would have, you know, with all the defenders, there's a possibility that this might have actually worked if they had been prepared for it. All right, May 1941, Maltese have shown that they are a little bit more important than the Italians expected. Uh, they've had, they put a Malta striking force on there, they've destroyed convoys, they're parting to, to make a major impact on the supply activities. <clears throat> they start revisiting their plans. They had assigned 40,000 troops, but again, they don't have the equipment. They have to start planning for the equipment, landing craft, et cetera, et cetera. Meanwhile, because of the problems that the Italians have had going into <clears throat> Greece, uh, their problems in North Africa, the Germans, who have not really wanted to get involved in the Mediterranean are now involved. And that means they've got troops in North Africa, which means those troops need to be supplied. Suddenly this, the, the supply situation and the interdiction that, was, that Malta was creating is now becoming a German problem. And in May, they have a decision to make. 
They've got, they've got their paratroopers, they've taken over Greece. They're taking a look at two possibilities. One is Malta that helps their, their logistics to North Africa. But number two is Crete. Because of the, the uh, Greek involvement that the Italians started, suddenly with, with British bombers on Crete, the Romanian oil fields are now within range of, of British bombs. That is more important to Hitler than his troops in North Africa. So he sends his troops into Crete rather, rather than Malta. Now, if he had sent everything into Malta uh, instead of Crete, Maltese defenses have been improved. Still no training. They've got more, more battalions on, on line. They actually have tanks now. Four Ma Matildas that are currently being used basically on the airfields as, as tractors until they've used way too much fuel and then they decided to park them along the side. They've also got now upgraded artillery. The Germans are concerned a little bit about that because it is a small island. There is no real place if they drop their paratroopers on the, on the island for them to regroup. Um, and they're afraid that basically they would come under attack almost immediately as sort of they land, which actually may not have happened because still at this point, all of the defenses are still wedded to the coastline. They had no reserves in the center or any place in the island for a counterattack force of any kind. They would have had literally to pull everybody away from the, the coastlines in order to have some kind of striking force. If, if the German paratroopers had actually landed in the middle of the island on, on their main airfield, chances are Malta would have fallen. Okay, then we get to November, December, 1941. You've got Germans are, are being basically stalled on the East Front. You now have a complete, another convoy that's been destroyed. They've got light cruisers on the island. Rommel basically did push west because he didn't have any, any uh, supply at that point. I mean, in, I believe, if I recall correctly, in Vince, you can correct me on this one, but something like 50 to 90 percent of the uh, supply that was sent to North Africa that put on in November was shot, was destroyed. 71, something like that, yeah. So it was... You know, basically, they starved the, uh, the, the Africa for it. So you've got the major problems here. And the final blow, and this, this one probably didn't affect them as much as they thought it was going to, but basically Pearl Harbor. And that brings the United States into, into the area. Now, what the Axis did at this particular point, particularly after the Beta convoy was destroyed, he sends Albert Kesselring down to take charge. Now, he's in charge of the Luftwaffe. He's not completely in charge of all of the forces down there, although his force of personality is one of the key things that he has going for him. And any of you that has read the uh, history of the Italian campaign know this, this guy is a sharp tool. One of the things he was, he was a major proponent of getting Malta out of the out of the war. He set up a massive bombing increase that basically dropped down, you know, in, by April 1941, 1942, down to the uh, basically had a, a an air force of about seven planes left. They literally had to park the rest of them because they had no no way of doing anything else. Basically, he had neutralized that island. And he wanted, at the point when he took over, to invade immediately. The Italians said, I don't think so. We want to wait until there's a dark dark period in moon. That's a major part of their, their entire strategy. They started putting together detail plans. Finally, they've got the equipment. They, they know they have the equipment. Now they're getting down to the detailed plans of how to take this island. In April 42, 
Hitler and Mussolini say, okay, sounds good. We've got Rommel is now back on the Gazala line. He's worried that the British are building up. He's trying to build up. He says, I'll go first. I'll knock everybody. I'll knock them back to, to Egypt. And then we'll take, then we'll take Malta. That was the plan. The plan they came up with, it basically looked like this. They were gonna take three German paratrooper regiments and two Italian paratrooper regiments and drop them into this area of the island. Now, the reason this area of the island is, is an interesting choice is because there, this whole area up here has really nice beaches. They're nice and slow, you can drop everybody. Problem is, British knew that too. So all of their coastal defenses literally follow this entire area. There are only two coastal guns that would cover this area here. That's why the, uh, the Italians and the Germans decided that's where they're gonna drop. The idea was to take three assault divisions, put them on the island, followed up with two normal divisions that would basically be the garrison troops afterwards. At that time, the 19, in 1942 in May, they came up with a better defensive plan for the island. Basically, every single battalion had its position on the island. They were set up with company and battalion level or company and platoon level strong points. The idea here now, you're not always on the coastline. You now have the capability of of responding particularly to any landing anywhere. Somebody is gonna be close enough to where those, those troops are gonna land, you're gonna hit them as hard as you can, as quickly as you can. More importantly, this area right here, which is the area that is on the, the high ground, looking over virtually everything that is important on the island, is the headquarters of what they call the Western Infantry Brigade, 4th Infantry Brigade, came later. It was their reaction force. Three battalions and all of their tanks were on the high ground. That was what they were going to use to really hit whatever, wherever the Axis decided to land or where they decided to show up. So they actually were thinking at this point, had a very much more detailed plan of how they were going to handle any kind of an invasion force that the, the Axis were going to throw at. It. So here's the, here's the, what they just, the Axis were going to try and do. All of the paratroopers were going to land on that part of the island, but the whole idea was not to have these, air, these troops take the island. The whole purpose of these paratroopers was to create a boundary to protect this coastline where the, the infantry was going to be landing. Each one of these circles was the area that they were going to set up anti-vehicle strong points to stop anything that coming, coming toward that beach, that beach area. And here again, I think the reason that you're looking at something like this is that they're still concerned about those hundred tanks that they thought were still on the island. They expected to be overrun apparently by the universal carriers uh, so they were going to make certain that those uh, Bren carriers were not going to get to the get to the beach. All right, their assault divisions were going to come in along this area, and you can see from this particular uh, map uh, these these are the slope lines. I guess that's the best way to put it. So you can see what kind of uh, lines that they were actually going to land. But basically, that's over in about a mile and a half. They were going to land both the Ferrelli and the Livorno divisions in order to, you know, put them on the island. They were going to collect up here, and then they were going to move across the island. Now, you can't see it, but I've got beach in uh, in quotes here because this is the beach they were going to land on. This is what that particular part of the coast looks like. Every single guy that was going to come onto that island was going to come up on a ladder. That's how that is. There, there were only two areas 
you know, on that particular area of the beaches that actually had access to roads leading up onto the plateau on the island. Everybody else was literally going to have to come climb out of their, their boats and get up onto that rocky shore. And that not only included the guys, but the Ferrelli and the Livorno divisions were also told, you're also landing all of your supplies for something like five days. So they were not only gonna land troops, they were gonna have to land tons of supply off of these boats, up ladders and put them on the shoreline. That's probably one of the reasons they expected to have that particular um, airborne uh, barrier was going to have to land and, you know, be there for quite a while because after, you know, if you're going to take, you know, 10,000 guys and all of their supply, it's going to take them a while to get reorganized into be some, some kind of a, a combat effective force. The other idea that they had was they were going to try a seaborne landing in, uh, called Larnica into the lower part of, of Marcia Soroka, which is another large port down at the bottom part of the, of the island. All of these were literally going to be small pioneer type landings with just a few people that were going to literally try and by, by coup de main take some of, the, some of the portions of the island. And this guy right here, they were going to try and push a captured group of, of Russian T-34s and KV-2 tanks inside, inside the, the harbor and landed at the seaplane base. Now, the idea behind this, for some reason, and we, in, in all my research, we still haven't figured out exactly how they thought they were going to do that. This was supposed to take place the day after the paratroop landing. And we're trying to figure out at one point, you know, how they expected to have a surprise attack against an alerted island. Our, when we ran the, uh, the invasion simulations, basically this failed completely. Uh, you, you run into basically all of the defenses in this area are alerted. They're not going to be caught by surprise. Half of these things are basically are shot down by, by artillery here on both sides of the, of the harbor entrance. Plus this is also mine, which they uh, didn't really expect. So that was the idea. The pros on this thing, if they could, could have landed people, they had a four to one troop advantage. And yeah, there was, you know, the Italian, you know, the main Italian troops were not real thought of at the time, but the Fulgori Paratroop Division showed its, its medal at, at El Amain. They were top-notch troops. The assault troops were highly motivated. They would have gotten involved. They would have been a, they would have been a good show for themselves. The island is, is totally isolated. There is no relief possible. The only Royal Navy groups that were capable of doing anything about it are at Gibraltar and Alexandria. They had a light group, a light, a light cruiser group at Alexandria that had the best shot, but you're three days away. Plus, the Italians had battleships, heavy cruisers, and light cruisers ready to intercept any an attempt that the, uh, the Royal Navy would have thrown their way. So they're basically totally isolated. The caveat on both of those numbers is Hitler. If this had happened and anything had delayed things, he's still looking at the East, Eastern Front because he's got major problems there. And he's going to want this thing over as, as soon as possible. So things get bogged up a little bit. And it's as sure as heck that they probably would be because nothing goes to, you know, playing completely. Um, he could start screaming and yelling and pounding his fist and uh, starting to talk about pulling out his troops. And if he does that, 
that starts to sink the Italian or Italian morale. So there is somewhat of a time limit, you know, once they've once they've got this thing started. Now, for the defense, you still had limited defensive training. You had no training at brigade level, so that any kind of an assault is going to cause a problem, is going to cause coordination problems. And this is another aspect that really got missed. See these guys up here? FGL1, that is the area where the Maltese reaction force was located. So according to this plan, when we took the two plans together, basically Germans take out that reaction force, which basically means that all of the rest of these areas that they're gonna try and break in, they've gotta now start pulling some of those trips from the other aspects of the island, which would have taken them time and probably not time that they really, really had. So there we go here. Of course, the cons on this whole thing, it's a very small island. You've got a lot of rock walls. It's going to be a tough, tough road for attackers. But at the same time, you can say exactly the same thing about the Maltese attacking the paratroopers once they land. It's going to be as hard on them to attack those troops as it is for the troops to attack them. Our prognosis for what would have happened basically follows this. Basically, after four days, you've got a starvation diet on this island. These people are going to be exhausted. One day, you've got your, all your adrenaline going because the invasion that you've worried about for several years is right here. That's going to handle, last you for a while, but after a while, if, if anybody has, has tried starvation diets here, like I have occasionally, um, <clears throat> you know, things slow down really carefully. And at this particular point, basically, they were doing things like sleep parades for the troops. Basically, that was what they did in the afternoon because they had literally no energy. They had to save their energy at times to do things that the RAF needed to do to keep the planes flying you know, fill up the, the runways, uh, rearm the planes, re refuel the planes, et cetera, et cetera. It was all exhausting. After several days, chances are their, their capabilities for combat would have been degraded significantly. Now, here's the, here's the key. Why didn't it happen? And it's from this guy right here. Three weeks after the Castle um, Kleisheim meeting where he agreed to invade Malta after Rommel took Tobruk. He basically said, no, we're not going to do it. He cited these, these particular reasons. The Italians just simply <clears throat> weren't ready for it. He expected the, uh, the Italian Navy to run if the Royal Navy came in, got involved. Uh, there was the security was bad, so there was no surprise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He told his 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 uh, paratroop general not to go back to Rome to help with the planning. He told Kesselring and the whole rest of the group, basically, I want you to continue the planning, but only mentally prepare. He did not want to do this. He had other he had other plan. I basically had other other concerns. He is expected basically that Mussolini would accept that particular decision when it was finally given to him, because basically the Italians could not do it without the German German help. So basically, he figured, you know, if I decide not to do it, Mussolini is going to go along with it. Now, the last question we got is, if it had been successful, what would have happened? And basically, in our view, not much. A couple of reasons. Number one, the U.S. is in the war now. Uh, torch is being planned. You've got you know, the, the supply situation in Egypt is very good. Within several months, you've got Alamein starting. They've got an overwhelming situation going on there. 
The German focus is all still on the Soviet Union because all of their plans are starting to fall down. So that's where their, their goal is. Major effect, we think basically, you know, well, I, actually at this point here, another, another point that I know a lot of other people, you know, that have looked at the Mediterranean have, have pointed out, this would have affected the amount of supply that actually got to Tripoli. But Tripoli is about a thousand miles from where the front line is. And you still have to get all of your supply from Tripoli to where it's needed. Because if it's in Tripoli, it's not doing Rommel any good at all. So chances are, if it had taken, basically not much would have happened. North Africa was still gonna be lost once, once Torch and Alamein got started. The biggest effect probably would have been what happened after Tunisia fell. Because then, if you go into Sicily, now you have to take Malta. And there's a difference between bombing, you know, I think the British would have, have not wanted to do that simply because the Maltese had basically gone through a two and a half year siege that had, had more bombs down, dropped on them than, than London had. I don't think the British would have wanted to bomb the Maltese islands in order to take it back. I think they probably would have tried to find some other way of doing it. One possibility, taking Sardinia. If you take Sardinia, and Operation Brimstone was actually primed at one particular point, you could drop directly across and land in Italy above Rome, which changes the entire strategic situation for, for the Italian plan. Now, if they had actually tried to go into it in 41 and 40, it could have been potentially significant because the supply situation probably would have been much more different. They could have planned a little bit harder. They would have moved things a little bit further along um, in North Africa, given them a chance to, to work out a little bit. You, but again, you still have a long way to go to Egypt and that's where you're, the Italians seriously wanted to go. So basically, if they had taken Malta early, that was a possibility that it might have affected things. If they'd taken in 1942, I think the, uh, the die had already been cast as far as what was going on there in the Mediterranean. Anyway, that ends my presentation. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions.